it, it's important for us to know where we came from. Mm -hmm. You know, it's important for us to know people besides Martin and Malcolm mm -hmm. and Rosa. Um, if it was choir rehearsal, Easter practice, whatever, you went home, put a skirt on, over them short. It does become exhausting, it does become frustrating, and you, you just want to scream. And my grandsons are uh, biracial, but I tell them when the world looks at you, they don't see you as a biracial. I came out of Fairview Elementary, that school is gone. I came out of Fairview Middle, that school is gone. I came out of Colonel White, that school is gone. For Black History Month, New Center 7's Letitia Perry brought together five African-American women for a candid talk. Yeah, topics included the black family, changes in the Gem City, the Crown Act, the black church, and police brutality. Here's part one in our Dayton Gets Real series called Conversations with Five Black Women. Anytime you put five women together, even when they don't know each other very well, you get magic. And that's exactly what happened. Our participants included Kimma Cunningham, pastor of two churches and worship leader at Central State University. Rachel Blanks, a fourth grade teacher and founder of Simply Savory, her own blend of spices. Jordan Calhoun, a new mom and multi-business owner, including a startup called Unemotional and a beauty brand called Smooch. Officer Letha Savage, mom, wife, high school teacher, and a 21-year veteran of the Dayton Police Department. And Linda Wells, retired from Standard Register, a mom, grandmother, and co-owner of JW's Wine Cellar. First topic, raising black sons in today's world. So you've got to know who you are as an individual, because if you don't, you know, you'll fall privy to what other people say that you are. Linda taught that to her sons and now to the next generation. And my grandsons are uh, biracial, but I tell them when the world looks at you, they don't see you as a biracial. They see you as an African American, they see you as a black male. You said it's that stress that you can't talk about that in therapy. While raising her toddler seven, Jordan worries about the world he was born into. Where he can be shot for wearing a hoodie like Trayvon Martin, or picking up a toy gun from a store shelf like John Crawford III, or playing in a park like Tamir Rice, or jogging like Ahmaud Arbery. All of these instances where black men lost their lives, and so much of that, I see my fiance do it. You know, and it's kind of like that could be him, and now that I've had my son, I'm like, oh my gosh. Because she says the stress of worrying whenever they leave home can drive the mother, wife, sister, or cousin to sickness. Pastor Kemma agrees. We talk about all of those other things like, you know, what we eat and how it impacts us and all of that. But this tension that we live with every day can be a killer. Our conversation naturally turned to police interaction with black men, specifically police brutality. From the Rodney King beating by LAPD in 1991 to the George Floyd Jr. nine minutes plus of pressure that killed him, the police officer in our group offered a unique perspective. Um, I put on this uniform, but at the end of the day, I'm still a mom. I am still responsible for raising this black male child. So she sat him down several times. When you go out with your friends, you know, it may be five of you, four of you are going to be white, one's going to be black. Be cognizant that you're the one they, they're going to be looking at. And while Rachel doesn't have a son, per se, she is influencing dozens of boys every day in her fourth grade classroom. She teaches them it's not always about color. I was like, listen, you are responsible for you. So you can walk around with the sagging pants and the attitude and think that you can go off on an officer and think that nothing is going to happen, you're in the wrong. Very much the same lesson Kimma taught to her son many years ago. No, you, you need to do the things that you're supposed to do because I'm going to need you to come home. Such incredible insight into the minds, thoughts, feelings, and behaviors of black women. Tomorrow, our conversation continues when we talk about black hair in the corporate culture, the black church, then and now, and having the talk with our black sons. That's tomorrow. For now, though, Letitia Perry, New Center 7.